Principal Mulligan reminding everyone that this is Reading Week. A week where all are invited to rediscover the wonder of books. A time when we can all immerse ourselves in the joy that is literature. To get you started, I'd like to offer the following suggestions from my personal book list. Oliver Twist by Charles Dickens, Tom Sawyer by Mark Twain, and, of course, my own self-published memoir. It's just a skin condition, really. So, grab a book, get together in four groups to debate and discuss the great works of literature. Obviously, Big Brain Boy is the world's greatest superhero due to his superior intellect. Uh, yeah, and he's got that, uh, what do you call it? A big brain, yeah. <laughs> no way, Marcus. Lead Fist would make mincemeat out of Big Brain Boy. Uh, you can't be serious, Billy. We mustn't forget Captain Cod. He's got the brains and the brawn to get the job done. I have to agree with you, Marcus. I think a perfect example of Captain Cod's superiority is evidenced in issue 123 when... What? Lydia, you're a girl. Clever observation, Rod. Now, as I was saying... Uh, Lydia, this is a meeting of the comic book club. Yeah, uh, sorry, but it's kind of a private meeting, you know, members only. Oh, what do you have to do to be a member? Well, you have to fill out an application, but... And you have to pass a written test on the history of comic books, but... And that's easy. I know everything about comic books. And you gotta not be a girl. What do you mean? Sorry, Lydia, but there are no girls allowed. It's just a rule we always had, Lydia. It's nothing personal. Nothing personal? <laughs> <laughs> what on earth is on my monitor? How dare you shh me? <laughs> Roderickus! Ah! Hey, sorry, Phantom, but that was the young and the wrinkled. You know, the soap opera about a group of spoiled rich kids working in a retirement home? A soap opera. On my monitor? The All Soap Opera Network, actually. All soap operas all the time. I don't know how it got there. How did it get there? Somebody must have ordered it from the cable company. You ordered it from the cable company? I must have. You mean some strange man from the cable company had his grease-stained hands all over my precious, sensitive, secret, private wiring? Nah, it was a woman, and her hands were pretty clean. How could you? How could you do this, Reticus? I feel so... Take it easy, Phantom. It's only on the one channel. See? Oops. 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 Three channels, but we got about 157 others. Water! Good idea. Villains! Scheming, heinous, underhanded, fearsome, detestable villains! That's the subject of this morning's lesson. Great villains through history. Oh! Can't get enough Shakespeare, can you, Marcus? But let's put this away and concentrate on today's lesson, shall we? Uh, but... Aha! Hmm. Aha! Marcus! You know comic books are banned from the classroom, particularly during read-a-book week. Nothing but strange men in silly hats and capes. Ridiculous! Ridiculous? But comics have villains too, Mrs. Snodgrass. Some very formidable villains, and many of them don't wear hats or capes at all. We're talking about history, Marcus. Yeah, Marcus, history. Not comic books. Yeah, Marcus, not comic books. Comic books are, well, a waste of time. Yeah, Marcus, comic books are. Thank you, Ruby. You're welcome. But Mrs. Snodgrass, in a lot of cases, comic books are the only type of literature some kids will read. They may not be Shakespeare, but, but they're fun. At least they're a start. You may have a point, Lydia. Not enough children read for fun in the age of TV and video and computer game thingies. Who knows? Given the right circumstances, someday I might even let you do a book report on a comic book series. Oh, yeah. 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 
But there's a time and a place for everything. That was great, Lydia. Thanks. Wasn't that great, Billy? Maybe we can make Lydia an honorary member of our comic club. Forget it. Uh, just an idea. Now then, back to our lesson. I want you all to think of the greatest villains in history. Who comes to mind? Me, me, the Phantom. I'm the greatest villain in history. Attila the Hunt. The Phantom. Ivan the Terrible. The Phantom. The guy who invented the Macarena. Ooh, that's a good one. The Phantom. What was that, Marcus? No, I, I didn't say. It sounded like the Phantom. The Phantom. Marcus, I do not want to hear about any silly comic book villain. Silly comic book villain? How could she call me the Phantom a silly comic book villain? Um, perhaps the hat and the cape? Silence! I'll show her silly comic book villains. You know, some of history's most colorful villains have been female. Female? You mean like women? <laughs> Precisely. Lucretia Borgia, famed pirates Annie Bunny and Mary Reed, China's Empress Dowager, all women who strived and succeeded in the otherwise male-dominated field of villainy. <laughs> now, let's see if you can name some others. <gasps> Gravity Girl! Wedgie Woman! I'll ignore those suggestions, thank you. Magnet Maestro, the living vapor. <sighs> Looks like Earl's annoyed again. Our ultimate goal is world domination. But in this case, we'll settle for your puny school. <laughs> I'm still waiting. <laughs> You'll never escape Magnet Maestro! Wedgie! Wedgie, woman. who are looking at some hard detention time. <laughs> no! You know, Raticus, I must say these silly comic book villains are pretty good. Of course, they ought to be good, for I brought them to life. And of course, Phantom, without you bringing them to life, why, they'd be pretty much lifeless. Don't touch the remote. But, Phantom, can't we switch over to the young and the wrinkled just for a minute? I gotta see what's going on. Don't touch ah! Don't! Earl's really done it this time. These guys are unstoppable. Two of them are girls, Billy. Whatever. <laughs> Come on, Marcus. You know these comic books inside out. What would Big Barn Boy or Head Cheese do now? <laughs> you mean Big Brain Boy and Lead Fist. I'm talking to Marcus. They take advantage of the villain's weaknesses. That's right. Every villain has a weakness. Excellent! So what is it with these four? It's true. I do have an encyclopedic knowledge of the characteristics of hundreds of comic book villains. I knew it. Except for these four particular villains. Huh? Well, Billy, you must know them. I should, but I haven't really read any of these comic books. Then we're doomed! Doomed! Unless, of course, Ruby, you or I happen to have read some of these comic books. Ha! What are the chances of that? We're girls! You mean, you've read these comic books, Lydia? Yes. So, you know the villain's weaknesses? Yes. Whoa! Is that ever weird? Come on. No, oh, it's on again! Rajakas! I told you, don't touch the... I didn't touch! I didn't touch! <laughs> Your ridiculous soap opera is on every channel! <gasps> and that just makes it so much sadder. <laughs> oh! ah! No, 
Now, if I remember right, Captain Cod defeated Magnet Maestro in Tales of Stupor number 53 by temporarily reversing the polarity of his core of attraction. I think I can manage that. Huh? Hmm. Hey, Magnet Head! You're not lost by any chance, are you? Lost? Ha! I could never be lost, for I always point north. I mean, north. But that's neither here nor there. The important thing is that children with braces and people with metal plates in their heads the world over tremble in my presence. <laughs> for I am Magnet Maestro, the maestro of... Hey, where'd you go? Hey! 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 <laughs> Hiding won't do you any good. All I have to do is turn on my core of attraction, and I'll draw you right out of there. <laughs> hmm. Oh, yeah! Ah! All right, kid. Now you've made me. Uh -oh. Marcus, no! Ah! And then unreverse the polarity trick. One down, three to go. Well done, Lydia. It's not like we wouldn't have figured it out, Marcus. Eventually. <laughs> Phantom, it's so sad. Yes, that's my name. Yes, that's my address. No, I did not order the All Soap Network. <laughs> Shh, I can't hear the TV. Sorry. I must insist. What did you say, you mouthy little rodent? No, ma'am, I was not talking to you. Wedgie Woman's great strength is her ability to focus in on her target. Once she's got you in her sights, there's no escape. But her strength can also be her weakness. If we can get her confused and she loses focus for a moment, then her wedgie attacks become wildly inaccurate. You sure know a lot about comic book villains. Doesn't she, Billy? Poor girl. Billy! It's nothing personal, Lydia. Behind you! Whoa! Whoa! Wedgie! <laughs> 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 Looking for these? Uh, what about me? Why don't you wedgie me? No, me, wedgie me. Yeah, her, wedgie her. Uh, me, 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 me. Dreaded self wedgie. What a way to go. Can we put our underwear back on now? I think it's safe. Good news! We should be getting the original signal back any second now. But, Phantom, can't we wait till the commercial? Uh, what, what have they done to her? Ooh, that's gotta hurt. That poor man. It is a man, isn't it? You see what's happened since your ridiculous soap opera network jammed my circuits? Yeah, this is even better than the soap opera network. It's people who can't function in real life. Sort of. Looking good, gaseous and rapacious. Oh, yeah! Make room for the fume, baby! The living vapor is gonna be hard to catch on account of his ability to turn into vapor and float away whenever he's in danger. That's true, Billy, but the real danger is that he could vaporize one of us. Uh, I knew that. But even vapor has mass, so we can catch him while he is vapor. Exactly what I was thinking, Marcus. Look at you, you old scaremonger, you. Psst. Hey, smog boy. Are you addressing me? Yeah, you stink bomb. Come on over here. Oh. Ah. Ah. Ha! Think you trapped me? Think again. Ah. Yeah. Ha. What's he going to do with that? Vacuum him into submission? Oh. 
to go. Good work, Billy. Uh, it's what I do. Yeah, but what do we do now? We dispose of Gravity Girl, who, according to the energy readings on my mini Mega Mind, is back in home room. So we just go in there and defeat her by taking advantage of her weakness or character flaw, which is, uh... She's super serious, has no sense of humor whatsoever. So how did the superheroes take advantage of that? That's the problem. Gravity Girl is a brand new villain. She's never been defeated. Then what hope do we have? I mean, we're not superheroes! No, but we could be. We shall have no more laughter, shall we, class? No, we shall have no more laughter. For our predicament is no laughing matter. I must say, Miss uh, Gravity Girl, that though I have nothing but contempt for your ultimate goal of world domination, I can't help but admire how you control a classroom. Thank you. And who have we here? <laughs> your mass to 10,000 times its original weight. <laughs> what <laughs> is so funny? <laughs> Sorry, it's just 10,000 times your original weight? <laughs> That's just really funny, <laughs> right? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a, a laugh riot. <laughs> you guys are all alone on this one. All right, clown boy. We'll see how funny you think it is now! Oh, no! Wait. Increasing 10,000 fold. I can't move! That poor woman. Hey, Phantom, aren't we located somewhere in the vicinity of, like, directly under that classroom? First of all, I want to welcome two new members to our club. Ruby Snarkis and our new associate president, Lydia Lopez. Our secretary will now read the minutes from the last meeting. Uh, we were discussing who's the greatest superhero. It came down to a tie between Big Brain Boy and Lead Fist. Are you kidding? Senorita Splat and the Sudsonator have it all over those guys. Oh, yeah. They're not only effective and cunning superheroes, they're like girls. Amazing. Uh, Johnny, Rod, that was us. You? you? Yeah. I was Senorita Splat, and Lydia was the Sudsonator. Yeah, yeah right. right. <laughs> yeah. 
I want to know everything about these two new superheroes. Like, what do they do in their secret identities? Well, I guess they're like mild-mannered. Yeah, they must be like mild-mannered girls. Exactly.